this past week, actually, the past several days, I just kept feeling a tug in my heart. Ask Apostle Will Wheat to minister. Well, I asked him at the last minute, but he said yes. So how many of you guys want a fresh word from God? Amen. To me, an apostle is someone who shares the mysteries of God. And then the rest of the fivefold ministry breaks it down. And so DJ is one side of the coin, and I think Apostle Will Wheat is the other. And he challenges me so many times, and I love you to life for that. So, Will Wheat, will you come on up and share? Praise God. Hallelujah. To the virtual audience that, that, that um, tune in every week, uh, this is John Master Giovanni. Just, I have a tan. <laughs> put on a beard. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, talk a little bit about perception. <laughs> well, I, I enjoyed the part that I had. I, I, earlier this morning at 10, I did my virtual. At, I do it from my home. And uh, so we jumped in the car, grabbed a, uh, a biscuit, and came on down the freeway so we could be here on time. And, and I really welcomed the opportunity um, for Karen's last. Who did you call me? Where is the pastor? You, you called me uh, Saturday night, last night? What, what did you call me? Last night? No, no, no. Friday. What, was it Friday? Friday? It was Friday. Okay. It just seemed like last night. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> And said, could you do this for us? And what really, pre the pressure was, uh, Buster needed a title. I don't, I don't do titles. I do, I do, I do, I do conversation. I don't, I do whatever inspires me on that moment, I get up and I talk about it. A title, uh, I said. So we came up with Anthropost. And uh, how, that, how that came about is um, we it, 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 it really shocked me as I was going back through my notes when I first started talking about mimesis and the, and the mimetic theory was over six years ago. It didn't seem like it was that, f that far. And I was reading, <coughs> uh, rereading a book, and I came across a statement, which I'll read to you in a, few, in a few minutes, and I came intentionally to talk to Dr. John about this statement on Friday, but he, his mind was somewhere else. And so we really did not get into the conversation, so I had to go and dev over why did this statement ring so true to me? And it had to do with teaching. And then God was bringing me through the thread of teaching to where we are now. And there's a thread that brings us to this point. A lot of subject matter topics, Arthur's discussions with my friends, <clears throat> and revelation from God. And so my preview about this is based on the, that string. You know, it, the string hasn't been broken. It, it's just continual. And I know this house and those who are viewing by virtual uh, uh, church is a very well-taught house. You see, see, you know, if you go into a house that's not very well-taught, then you, you feel the urge to, you know, go over some of your statements. But, but um, uh, Dr. John and Pastor Karen, have taught you well with, with uh, Christina. So this is a very well-taught house. So I feel very comfortable <laughs> in saying whatever I have to say because they will clean it up after I leave. <laughs> Praise <laughs> God. Amen. <laughs> spiritual, spiritual janitors, right? <laughs> uh, they will clean it up. And so we want to... Um, um, Anthropos, in the simplest form, means becoming fully human. Andre Rabbi wrote something years ago, and, and, and it impressed me because of, of, it impressed me for two reasons. One, I have myself been sitting at the feet of Dr. John to talk about the Genesis factor. I have the series, and I have his insight personally as a friend uh, on how God has uh, related this to him. So this is going to sound a little bit different, only because I'm making a different point. Uh, the point that I want to make is to bring us to the development that I believe was in the heart of, of Christ when he came to the planet to bring our attention to the good that's in us and not point out to what we perceive as the bad that's in us. <clears throat> and religion 
has majored on the bad that's in you, which I think um, uh, is, is errant, not on purpose, just because we often recite and mimic what we've been taught. Okay, and it has nothing to do because we, we, we we're born with the the need to know God, to know ourselves, to discover how to please God, what direction would you want me to go? And so we search out instructors to help answer that need that's inherent in most, if not all of us. But there's something in you that we have not been taught to pay attention to that's with you from the day of your birth. And that is the echo of the voice of God is in every human person. It does not, re- it does not matter where you're born or what church you go to or what your denominational name is. All of mankind has God's image echoed in them. They just need to be taught how to connect with it. That is the living word. Okay. <laughs> the written word will kill because it, one of the things that the written word is left to is our interpretation of it. <laughs> okay, well, praise God, it's true. <laughs> so it, 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 the, the, it will kill you more than it will build you up because it's ministered through the intent of the deliverer who calls himself the teacher at the moment. But there is, should be a witness with what's being taught, with what's in you. So I tell my congregation, I'm not here to teach you anything. I'm here to echo the truth that's already in you. Because we're all on the same plane. We're all connected to our Father. Amen. All right, praise God. That's enough. I'm going to sit down now. (laughs) I got amens. I'm going to quit when when I'm winning. Now, drawing from this book, Andre Rice, he says, the way in which God creates is also uh, very cooperative. He doesn't create fish by himself in a heavenly aquarium and then throw them into the sea. No. He calls on the waters to participate in this creative act and to bring forth the sea creatures. Let the waters bring forth. He also calls on earth to produce the animals. God is the source of creation and calls on creation to be part of the creative process. This is not a picture of an external God acting upon a separate creation, but rather of a God intimately involved in every natural process. This God is no uh, demigurge, a separate entity that exists independently from creation, but rather he is the source of all existence. The reason why there is something rather than nothing. Creation is therefore not a singular event that happened a long time ago, but rather every moment is an act of creation and existence itself is evidence that our creator is closer than we imagined. Yet despite this intimate connection, there remains the infinite difference. God distinguishes what is not himself, and in this act of distinction, this gift is distance, creation happens. Now, now one of the things that, that uh, I wanted to talk to you about becoming fully human is to, to be a participant in God's creation, because he doesn't do it by himself. The invitation is to be a part of what he's doing. And see, our prayers is always asking God to do something apart from us or in spite of us. Somebody say amen. In, in spite of my behavior, we want God to help me. We want God to bless me instead of us entering into the participation of our creation. Now, y'all listening to this. You have to enter into the participation of this. And then you will, you will see the oneness that Christ is talking about. The, the, the oneness that deals with us being participants and not just spectators of a blessing. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. So I see now, 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 now I'm going to get happy myself. There, that's okay. I'll, I'll say my own amen if y'all don't want to help. I know we, we're virtual, but I got people out here. That's who I'm talking to. So, 
So, so in participant, see, that's how you miss out because you refuse to be a part of. See, we keep approaching God as though we're hirelings and slaves instead of approaching him as sons. See, when we pray, we pray like we're distant from him, like we're, we're different from him, but we are like him. So in Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 26, you said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Amen. I'm messing that up, but that's basically image and likeness. So basically, we're invited to behold as he is. And in that invitation, there is no distance or separation between me and God. So you don't get the idea of being different from God until Genesis chapter 3. When you have this, what we call the serpent, I particularly call it the ego, but when you have the serpent deal with Eve and Adam about this tree. And dealing with this tree, this tree is a standoff because this tree seems to be different than all the other trees. Now here you are. Uh, one of the examples uh, I, I gave, I give to my congregation, I gave this morning, I'll do it again. Uh, I was a spoiled little boy. Uh, <clears throat> I was the first male grandchild and, uh, on my father's side. So my grandmother spoiled me royally. She was kind of a wealthy black woman in the South. There's not many of those there, but when I came up, but she was a wealthy black woman in the South, and she didn't. And she was wealthy because of real estate, and she really didn't mind flaunting her money. So she 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 would make sure that I had everything made that was a toy. I had a room, a bedroom, dedicated to my toy room. I didn't have a toy box. I had a toy room. <laughs> Amen. All right? So and my grandmother made sure that I had everything I wanted. So when I, when I read about this child being in a room with toys and all the toys was his, I could relate to this. This is talking about my nieces now. I could relate to that because I could re <laughs> all these toys are mine. And in this writing, it talks about this babe that's two years old and with all these toys. And he's playing with all these toys, and he's kind of flustered because he don't know what toy to play with. Right. Right. Have we ever been frustrated in life? We've got all these gadgets, but we need one more. Ouch. I just got to get the next thing. Got to have the next thing. I don't, know what I don't know what to do with what I got. But see, now in rehearsing this to you, I can re blame it on my grandmother. She's the one that made me like this. <laughs> so, enter another two-year-old. Now, the two-year-old comes in the door, and the door closed behind this two-year-old. So you have two two-year-olds. Two you have the two-year-old that owns all these toys. All these toys is his. And a brand new two-year-old that just came into his room. And the first thing that this two-year-old does is go towards this fire truck. And the two-year-old that owns everything in the room, all of a sudden, that fire truck becomes the most important toy in the room. Why does that fire truck become the most important thing in the room? Because this two-year-old goes to the fire truck first. So now the two-year-old that owns the fire truck gets up and goes over and begins to take, try to take the fire truck from the two-year-old that just came. What, that, what does that communicate to the two-year-old that just came? That communicates that this must be the best toy in the room. So he begins to tug back at the fire truck. <laughs> so you have two two-year-olds fussing over this fire truck. When all of that room belonged to him. Think about Adam and Eve. All of creation belonged to them. <laughs> it wasn't until the thought came about a singular tree. And, and that tree representing something lacking in them because the thought was, this must be God's special tree. Because if you partake of this tree, you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So there must be some lacking in me 
that I need to reach out from myself and take into myself what will make me more like God. Well, in Genesis 1, we don't have that argument. It's only here when the egoic thought comes that plummet us into what we have today. All the hardships and all the confusions, all the contradictions that's happening to us today is happening because all of us have this feeling that something is lacking in me and I need to get that to be better. I don't care what it is. It could be a job. It could be a career. It could be a home. It could be a car. It could be the big church. It could be members. It could be a friend. It could be a girl. It could be a guy. Something makes me think that if I get that, I'll be better. Instead of being happy. Because every time we got that, that feeling never left. We just replaced it with something else. And so what Christ is inviting us to do is to be what God has created us to be. And in the course, there's a statement in there that we teach, and if you listen to me at all, I say it over and over again. I'm not a body. You know, I'm free. I remain as God created me. Because our, our, our thought process is from physical and not spiritual beings. And I tell you, I said on Wednesday, let's not be in love with the temporary. Amen. <laughs> I mean, we fall out over the temporary. Everything changes in this world. There's nothing that remains the same. Anybody over here in this, in this room right here? Over 40. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can look at Buster and Christine. They're they still young and vivacious, and they even look young. There ain't no wrinkles on them at all. And, but look, Buster looked like, I mean, Buster, Buster like energy going somewhere to happen. He's all young, and he could do it. He could work all night, come handle the board on Sunday morning, and then work all night. He could do all of that and not feel tired. But some of us over 40, anybody else over 40, if something happens after 40, that really uh, messes with certain people's mindset. Amen, it does. It just messes with them. Now, now, you know, now I've watched Karen. Now, Karen really puts me to shame because this Karen right here, this Karen, really, I watched her on video. I follow her on Facebook. She has energy that's absolutely amazing. Um, so I think she's connected to the spirit that energizes her, the spirit that I'm mean, talking about God. And so she just do whatever. People say she can't do, she do. I couldn't believe the ship. I'm off my, my subject now. On the ship, just going through all these courses. I'm saying, I can't do that. And she's doing, she's doing it. And she's doing it having fun. It looks dangerous, but she's, she's going for it. And, but, but she's an exception. Most of us get over 40. We, we, we kind of careful. She, oh, she's under 40. Okay, fine. We, we get kind of careful. You know, amen. I, 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 my pastor here was talking about why do old people fall? He said he don't either. He said, I don't know why. Nobody's asked it why do old people fall. They don't need to. They don't want to, but all of a sudden they just fall. Amen. It's just something that happens as you get older. There's a deterioration in this world system. What was new is now old, and what was young now gets older. What was strong gets weaker. And if you just leave something alone, it deteriorates all by itself. It doesn't really need any help. It just, because in this system that, that we call this world, things change. So don't be in love with the things that change. Don't draw your identity with things that change. Then that way you will never be disappointed when you're in the flow of life, come on, talk to me, and in the flow of life, you make the adjustments that's necessary to enjoy the blessings that God has you at. You're going to experience something that you could not experience 25 years ago, but you're ripe for right now. God, come on, talk to me. Somebody, somebody, you got to realize that life gets better, doesn't get worse. <laughs> People be looking back talking about, oh, I miss them days. I don't miss none of them days. <laughs> I 
I'm glad to have survived those days. I don't miss none of those days. But something is happening. We are becoming more human as we become older. We, be, we, we are actually growing into our anthropos. And you get to the point that you're your Ayadaya in a particular circle, which means you're the wise, insightful one. It's nice to get to the point that you're the wise, insightful one. You can answer the questions instead of asking them all the time. And so Christ is bringing us into the light so we can be our own Ayadayas, drawing from his light. Amen? So we are one with him, becoming fully human. A lot of us want to escape the earth. We want to, you know, we want to escape. You know, a lot of people talk about you know, when he comes back, we're going to meet him in the sky. And we're going to kill everybody and send people to hell. And <coughs> Which is not really what's happening in the gospel. What's happening in the gospel is you are to be a mixture. Come on now. You are to be a mixture of heaven and earth walking either in heaven and in earth, taking whatever form is necessary on, every, on any plane that you decide to dwell on. The appearing of Christ is to give you a hint of that mixture. He took on a form and came, and he says, now handle me. This is not a ghost. I want you to understand, this is your inheritance. I'm giving you a foretaste of where this is going. No locked door, shut window can stop you oh, from getting to the other side. Hey, come on now. You can just get there because you decide to be there. Now you come into your full self. Amen. You come into your full self. You know, I was listening to us believing God. You need to understand there's nothing to believe God for because there's nothing you don't already have. Somebody ought to say amen. Because see, like, see, see I, I, believing for something is to indicate that I don't already have it. But how can I not already have it when he's given me all things? So if he's given me all things, I should understand I already have what I'm thinking I'm short of. See, that thought of lack is not God. That thought of lack ushers into your life a hardship and a contradiction. But you've you got to remember, if you think you're lacking, you're going to create an experience that brings a witness of lack. Oh, praise God. Because you're creating with him, not apart. Mm. So whatever you say, you've got to be careful on what you say, what you're thinking, because you're creating what you're speaking. Amen? So all you've got to do is change your identity. And you change your confession. And you change your confession, you change your experience. And when you change your experience, you're gonna, people are going to come to you as I die. How do I get that? What must I do? Become like you. Because all of us want to mimic somebody. Mm, I want to be like somebody. There's no such thing as authentic. You cannot be authentic. Every part of your being is relational. Starts with your mother. Your mother's the first person that you gazed upon. It was her gaze and your gaze. That was, that was your world, my mom and me. It wasn't until my mom started looking away from me that I saw another world. Oh, because wherever her gaze went, that's where I went. I wanted to see what my mom seen. Something about my niece is not only you, do you imitate behavior, you also imitate intent. <laughs> you don't only pass off behavior, you pass out intent, intention. So what is your intention? Who are you mimicking? And Jesus says, well, I mimic only my father because I only say what I hear him say. I only do what I see him do. So who are you mimicking? His imitation is to, to mimic our father. Pray in this matter. Our father, as I am, so are you. Come on, talk to me, somebody. So, so we, we are, we need to quit putting ourselves down with our words and our thought. Change your mind. I can do all things. <laughs> I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. And I want to thank God for making me more human. I'm no longer messed up. I'm mixed up as one with him. Amen. Hi, I'm Pat.
Pastor Karen of Oasis of the Valley, and I'm here with Pastor Christine and Dr. John, and we'd like to share something with you. If you don't live in the local area and you'd like to be part of our Oasis Fellowship, we've got a way to connect. We'd like to get to know you personally by video conference calls and telephone calls, and Dr. John will tell you more about how that came about. It was just a few weeks ago, in literally one week's time, I got several emails from people in different parts of the United States and even overseas who were interested in finding a church in their area that's preaching the same powerful message that we are and in the way we are that's quite unique. And unfortunately, I couldn't give them really an answer. I know of a couple of churches and friends that are, are ministering like this, but honestly, there's not too many. And we are truly trying to press forward into a whole new arena in God right now. And uh, what wound up happening was that the thought occurred to me, well, we've got all this amazing technology. Why can't we pastor them with the video conferencing and stuff that you yeah. were talking about and minister into their life? And who knows what God will be able to do through that with enough people who may be able to start a church out there. Sounds good. So if you're interested, please click the link below and we'll explain more. 